I finally got the call. I got the heads up from Danny. I can now go down and check out my brother's building that he's been working on for seven months. She's been pulling me back. She's been keeping me away because she says, she says he wants to make me proud. Remember Mike Wolf, the famous star of History Channel's American Pickers? He used to appear on the show with Frank Fritz, his old friend, and later with Robbie, his brother. Together, they used to travel several miles to the homes of audiences who invited them to check out their collections and trash heap for Rusty Gold. In a career that spanned years, Wolf sought out whatever collections he could find. The ones that could be restored and sold are usually transferred to his antique archaeology stores in Leclerc and Nashville, Iowa. Over the years, his warm personality won him the admiration and respect of his fans. Even his widely publicized separation from Jody, his wife, and Fritz, his partner, did little to affect that. But he does love his work, doesn't he? His passion for what he calls his life purpose is fascinating. In fact, the show Pickers became more popular because of his charismatic presence on it. You may remember his quip about telling America's history with each piece he restores, but what else do you know of the man? I've been looking for you for four years. An amazing, very rare mag model motor. For being over 100 years old, this thing is in great shape. Wolf's unpleasant childhood made him passionate about restoring trash to valuable antiques. Wolf might be a star now, but he had a lowly beginning and lived in Bettendorf and Iowa before settling in Leclerc. His mom, a single mother, has to look after him and his two siblings. Like most kids, he was bullied constantly, but our star has always been resourceful. So he found a way of avoiding the bullies, and what better way than cutting through the back alleys? It wasn't a pleasant sight, as the backyards are filled with trash, but as time passed, he discovered that the garbage could be helpful, that things considered useless or unwanted can be restored to other uses and sold. As someone from a poor background, when Wolf discovered that treasures lie in the trash, he was hooked. His eye-opener was a discarded bike he picked up from the rubbish heap when he was about six years old. He retouched it and sold it for five bucks within a couple of days. Five bucks, yes, five whole dollars. Such an amount of money can do something to a six-year-old. For Wolf, it built his passion for remodeling trash and made him a bicycle and motorcycle enthusiast. His love for bikes and motorcycles was apparent to the American Pickers audience. In fact, he got his first motorcycle by bartering with stereo speakers. I can think of many career paths for a two-wheeled lover, and Wolf considered these paths. His love for bicycles, even as a kid, meant that he could pedal a bike faster than kids his age and even better than kids who were more than five years old. As long as bicycle racing was concerned, no one was his match. Once, he got a job as a bicycle assembler and messenger in Chicago, but home and his girlfriend kept calling. Wolf was practically addicted to bikes so much that he could hardly pay his bills. The addiction was so strong that he kept buying them any chance. He admitted that he was like a crack addict at that time. However, his addiction seemed to have a silver lining as a store became open for sale in his area. Wolf quickly sold all his bicycles and a few items and acquired the store. He went on to market his bikes in and around the locality. He did so well for the store that they had to open a new branch in Davenport. He was so good that he was practically the primary bicycle salesman in that area. How couldn't he? His affection for bikes is contagious, and his love for bicycles is not just limited to selling bikes. I dare say that he would have ended up as a professional cyclist in this era. Oh yes. He was something close to this. His love for riding bicycles didn't diminish because he started selling bikes. To prove that he's still as good as a kid, he entered a cycling competition when he left the other kids trailing in his wake. The Register's annual great bicycle ride might have been seeing expert bicycle riders, but they've yet to see the skills of Wolf. The competition takes cyclists around Iowa, and the competitors have to prove their mettle by riding across the entire state in six days. The bikers were expected to cover 67 miles each day and 468 miles overall. Grueling? You have no idea. But this didn't discourage Wolf, as he competed five times in the competition during the 80s and 90s. He was so good at cycling that he always brought a trophy home from cycling races. On one occasion, he finished first in the time trial championship organized by Iowa State in 1998. 
As much as he enjoyed riding bicycles and competing in races, he still reserved a spot in his heart for picking. When tragedy struck, his bicycle business grew and was about to expand outside the region. An unexplained fire burnt down his bicycle store in Eldridge. Wolf wasn't prepared for this, which forever changed his life trajectory. The initial owner of the store had a crazy insurance policy that meant that Wolf couldn't receive any compensation till three years later. Even though he had another store, the numbers show that his recovering financially is a lost cause. And as if to make matters worse, eBay started operation and things forever changed for Wolf. But Wolf is a man that determines his destiny. He figured that he needed to make a career out of his passion, and that's how his picking business materialized. He sold his bicycles and bought a cargo van. He also got a website and a cell phone, and that's how Antique Archaeology was started. Surprisingly, the business started very well, but Wolf always believed that it could end up one day as a show, much like Anthony Bourdain shows. So, while driving around, knocking on doors, meeting collectors, and peering through their collectibles for interesting objects worthy of his antique store, he never lost sight of the fact that his business could wind up as a TV show. He documented his journey on the road, taking pictures and shooting selfie videos. After about five years of remodeling trash and pitching his TV show idea to various networks, he made a breakthrough with Mary Donahue, the History Channel executive. In airing his show, Mary stated that history is not a channel dedicated to the past and that the Wolf's documentary brings a breath of fresh air to the channel. Wolf is a multi-talented individual. Not every day you can see someone you can successfully run a business, run a TV show, win cycling competitions, and write songs. And would you believe it? He's a fan of country music. Wolf and country music icon Dale Watson have penned a few songs together. If the testimonies of Brian Ahern, the decorated producer, are to be believed, Wolf is a great songwriter. Brian has produced tracks for big shots like Glenn Campbell, Johnny Cash, Roy Orbison, and more, and he confirmed that he is a fan of American Pickers. It's a surprise how Wolf finds time to write songs with all the unending hours he spends on the road. That goes to show how resourceful the man is. His Leclerc store is his only antique archaeology store, but with the success of American Pickers, another store is open in Nashville. Because of his connection with his hometown Leclerc, the American Pickers star owns a house there. Wolf and Jody, his lovely wife, announced their daughter Charlie's birth in 2012. It wasn't all happiness, as baby Charlie had a cleft lip and palate. This is a common situation that affects millions of babies around the world. The good news is that it is treatable. So, baby Charlie's treatment and the corrective surgery was successful. This singular event opened Wolf's eyes to the fact that some parents may not be affluent enough to provide fast and safe surgery for their babies with the same affliction as Charlie. To help such parents, Wolf partnered with Operation Smile, which prides itself as one of the world's largest organizations catering to babies. Operation Smile is an outreach organization that provides treatment to kids whose parents can't afford the corrective surgery needed. Due to Wolf's donation, their profile grew and more awareness was created for what they do. So, not only is our man both talented and resourceful, but he also has a heart of gold. And he showed this in 2015 when he, in collaboration with Isabel Bloom, an artist, created sculptures named Charlie Smile to further help the organization's cause. The American Pickers show got to air because Wolf persisted in his dream to restore seemingly trashy objects. But Mike's remodeling idea is not limited to rubbish and bikes. He is enthusiastic about remodeling and restoring old or forgotten infrastructures. He admitted that he has bought and restored many abandoned and old houses in his hometown and Columbia, Tennessee. These restorations cost him millions, but it's something that he's happy to do as it fulfills a part of him. It's something he's passionate about. He attempted to bring that passion into restoring his town as a whole. To achieve that, he vied for the city council. Unfortunately, he didn't win, but at least he has clarified his intentions. These days, Wolf is focusing on his other businesses outside the American Picker show, like real estate and clothing. He has also dabbled into screen acting, appearing in an episode of NCIS. Mike Wolf seems to have a kind of Midas touch. Trash he touches turns into antiques, abandoned houses he buys into real estate, and his shows are widely viewed. When he touches rust, it seems to turn to gold.